I'm Christina Poncher. Thank you to everybody joining us here in attendance at the MGM Grand and watching us live streaming on ESPN+. Plus. We have a fantastic event planned for you this Saturday, September 14th from the T-Mobile Arena and streaming live on ESPN+. Plus. Our main event features the lineal heavyweight champion Tyson Fury taking on the undefeated fighter from Sweden, Otto Wallin. There will also be three fights total, including the main event on the main ESPN Plus broadcast that starts at 7 p.m. Pacific time. Opening that show will be a Mexico versus Puerto Rican clash at 140 pounds with Jose Zepeda taking on Jose Pedraza. And just prior to the main event, it's a Mexican versus a Filipino, another clash that has happened just a few times here in Las Vegas before between Emmanuel Navarrete defending his title just weeks wait, after wait, wait, his wait. last. It's not just a Mexican Hold against on, I'm getting the there. <laughs> a Mexican is one of the best fighters in yes. Mexico, Navarrete, yes. who's knocking everybody out. And the Filipino is the grandson of the first Filipino to win a world title, the legendary Flash Alordi. His grandson is fighting for a world title. That's not just the Mexican against the Filipino. I, I am yep. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> You're right, right, Christine. Right, right. I haven't even got to say their name yet, but yes, like as as the boss men said. Meg versus Navarrete will be the co-main event on Saturday night from T-Mobile. Obviously, Bob very excited about that fight, as he should be. You'll be able to talk to them uh, tomorrow. They'll be up here uh, for a press conference, as I previously mentioned. And then, as always, we have a stacked undercard getting started at 4.30 local time. Uh, some of the fighters you will see on the undercard streaming as well on ESPN Plus is uh, Stockton's very own Gabriel Flores Jr. fighting on the undercard, Guido Vianello, and Tyson Fury stablemate Isaac Lowe fighting on that undercard. So make sure you tune in early, 4.30 p.m. for the undercard streaming on ESPN Plus, and then switch over at 7 p.m. for the three main fights. Tickets are still available. You can purchase them at AXS.com or by phone, and uh, the doors will open at the T-Mobile Arena just prior to the main event. A Saturday's event, as I mentioned, is promoted by Top Rank in association with Frank Warren's Queenberries Promotions and Salida Promotions. So both Dimitri Salida and Frank Warren are joining me up here on the stage. And before we talk to you guys, um, Bob, Fury fighting on this weekend, which is such an important weekend for boxing, uh, why, why was he the easy choice for you to headline a show on Mexican Independence Day? You know, he does say he is the Mexican Gypsy King. I'll tell you, I'll tell you really why as a promoter. The best fans in boxing come from two places. They're the English, the UK fans, tremendous support for boxing, and the Mexican fans, whether they're Mexican nationals or Mexican Americans. So what better platform to show this fight, to show Tyson Fury, who we're building up in this part of the world, than to show him on Mexican Independence Weekend before a big, big Mexican audience. And as you mentioned, a fight that you're excited about, bringing Navarrete back just weeks after his last title defense. I mean, he seemed to really garner a lot of respect and his fan base is growing tremendously. So he seemed like another no-brainer for this weekend, despite just fighting three weeks ago. He knocks the guy out, we had a fight about Dimitri got a kick out of it three or four weeks ago. And he knocks the guy out in the third round, and then the bulb goes off. <coughs> Jesus, maybe he can come back like the old fighters. Like Ray Robinson fought Jake LaMotta three times in, I think, four months. That's three ten, times. Ten round in between. And a 10 round in between. So, uh, you know, fighters were made that way. And when I went in the ring with Fernando Beltrana, we asked Navarati, will you be ready for Mexican Independence Day? He looked at me, he said, are you crazy? Mexican Independence Day in Las Vegas? Sign me up right away. And so he's gonna be fighting, not an easy fight. Flash Shalotti's grandson, who's lost one fight, I think four years ago, and is 23 and one. And with Otto coming here, a Swede versus an Englishman on Mexican Independence Day weekend, but we stack the card, right? I mean, Quadras as well is fighting on this card, Zapata versus Pedraza, so there's something for everybody come Saturday right. night. Dimitri called me when he said, why don't he, Dimitri promote, Dimitri Salida, my old fighter is now a pro great promoter in New York, 
and Detroit also, right? And, and Dimitri said, why not my fighter, Otto Wallen? He's undefeated and so forth. And then he said, you remember Ingemar Johansson? And I was not even in boxing then. Listen to this. So you got to learn. <laughs> Floyd, pa Floyd Patterson was the great champion. And suddenly, Customato was looking to get him an easy fight. So he gets this Swedish guy, Ingemar Johansson, that nobody ever heard of, comes over with his what gorgeous wife and a gorgeous girlfriend, <laughs> right? <laughs> and it was like a big joke in the papers. And not only does he win the fight, not only does he knock out Patterson, he has him down eight times. So you gotta watch these Swedes. They got a hell of a lot of fortitude and punching power. And Otto is not going to be distracted. You didn't bring two pretty ladies with me. <laughs> I'm looking to pick some up. Hey! hey! You're in the right place. <laughs> well, then let's just segue right to you, Dimitri, and, and securing the opportunity for your fighter and Otto to get this fight against Tyson Fury on a huge boxing weekend. Uh, you know, what does that mean for you and your team? Well, it's obviously huge. Otto's an undefeated world-rated fighter. He is uh, beating everyone put in front of him. He's been trained in the United States with Joey Gamash, who's a former world champion. Great trainer, great teacher for over four years. So while people say that he hasn't really fought in the United States, he's had the experience of training in the United States, boxing and sparring with some of the best fighters in the world. And he's 20-0, and, 0, uh, and uh, you know, I'm, in the United States, not a lot of people know who he, who he is, but on Sunday morning, he's gonna be the biggest name in sports. Yeah, I mean, if, if you can get inspiration from anything that we've seen this year, you know that on Saturday night anything can happen. So why should people give him a chance? We're here in Vegas, put their money all in on, on all of uh, June 1st, I have Joel Miller, so I almost was the result of that uh, upset. But unfortunately, yeah, that, that didn't work out. But here we, here we go again, um, June 14th, and Tyson Fury, another great heavyweight. And I feel always going to do a great job. Well, we're looking forward to it. And, and Frank, uh, you up here as well as a promoter with your fighter, co-promoter with... With Tyson, what did you take away from his first U.S. promotional experience in U.S. fight? How would you kind of sum that up since that was the last time we saw you? I thought it was outstanding. You know, Tyson is Tyson. There's not another boxer like it. Certainly I've been involved with in the sport. He's just so colorful. He just captures everybody, everybody's love and attention. And, it was, and he was punch perfect. It was a fantastic performance. Great entrance, but the performance was outstanding. And I was really pleased. With it. And you've got to remember where he's come from in a very short space of time. Is it 14 months ago? You know, he's lost all this weight. He's now training for fights rather than training to lose weight. Ben's done a fantastic job training him. He's in great condition now. And obviously, we don't look past Otto because obviously he's, uh, he's there. He can, as Bob said, it, can, it calls an upset. Anything could happen. If Otto had been fighting uh, Ruiz nine months ago, we might be discussing who would win that fight. Now Ruiz is world champion. Anything can happen in boxing, and, and Tyson's got to be top of his game, and he's got to do what, he, what I know he can do. He's the best, for me, the best heavyweight out there in the world, and I'm sure he comes through this one, and, he's a, and, it, is, and it is going to be a tough fight for him. He comes through this one, it's going to set up the big fight that Bob and I have been working very hard to deliver. We don't want to look too far ahead, but I know that, that there's a lot there's a lot on the line there. Frank, let me just ask you one more thing. I mean, this is a significant weekend for boxing here in North America, Mexican Independence Day weekend. Uh, did you imagine yourself sitting up here with Tyson on, on, on this on this weekend even a year ago? No, he's an honorary Mexican. Right? You know, that's it. He's, he's take, wherever he goes, he takes over, you know that. And, uh, I do. And it's fantastic to be there. And I'm not overlooking the fight. What I'm saying is that's what's at stake. Oh, absolutely. There's a lot at stake at this fight. You know, anything can happen in boxing. One punch can change the whole scene. There's a lot at stake. Tyson can't afford to take his eye off the ball. And you know that Otto and his team all there, you know they're coming to try and cause an upset. There's no doubt about that. 100%. And, and the man that's got uh, the auto prepared for this fight in Joey Gamash. And, and Joey, what does it mean to you to be able to be up here with your fighter? Because he's been quoted as saying he wouldn't be in this position if it wasn't for you. So what does it mean to you to be up here getting ready for him to take on the biggest challenge to date in Tyson Fury? Yeah, it's a great opportunity. Tyson Fury is the top heavyweight out there. So when we uh, got mentioned for this match, it's too good to turn down. Boxing's a sport of surprises. And we're looking to pull one this Saturday. 
What did you see in him back in 2013 when you guys first linked up? It seemed like the chemistry was there from the get-go. What did you see in him uh, that got him prepared for this moment? Well, I knew he had what it takes to, to become a champion. He was special and he worked hard, dedicated, very intelligent. Uh, he had everything. And I felt like, hey, now we got to get the experience built up and get us up into that position. And Dimitri got us there. Now we're ready to take over. Anything you've been able to tell him that you can kind of share with us in terms of your experience on the big stage to kind of get your fighter ready? I know until he walks out there and does it, it nothing really, really prepares you, but anything that you've been able to share with him that you can tell us from your experience? Well, working smart or working hard or doing things right. It's not just going out there working hard, but being smart as well and doing the right thing. I've studied Fury a lot, a top guy, no question about it, but we've got everything to gain and nothing to lose. This is, uh, everything's on the line for us, and this is what we want. And Otto, just like he said, I mean, you said the same thing, everything to gain and nothing to lose, but you put yourself in this position to, to change your life for, for your family and, and those people around you. Can you put into words what you felt when you got the call and the opportunity now to fight Tyson Fury this weekend? Yeah, I was very happy. He dropped out of the sky, and I was very happy. I talked to Joey about it, and we were all for it. So... Then uh, we got it done and we're finally here. And it's been, it's a dream come true for me to be here. Uh, being, I come from a small place in Sweden and now I'm here on the big stage and I'm dreaming about this and I'm, I'm ready to put it all on the line. For those who haven't really had a chance here in the States to see you fight, there's been a couple mishaps that have prevented that in the last year from happening. But how would you kind of describe your style as a fighter for those that are looking forward to seeing you? What should they expect from you come Saturday night? You can expect a good boxer. Um, I'm well schooled. I got a good background. And I got good defense, good offense, good defense, and yeah, I think I have what it takes to cause an upset. You've been sparring with the likes of Anthony Joshua, Kubra Pula, Big Baby Miller, uh, just to, to name a few. Have those experiences? Although yes, headgear and the different gloves it is a different story, but that's still good experience for you to prepare you for Tyson Fury. Yes. Yeah, of course. I mean, sparring is just sparring, but it's the closer you can get to a fight then. I haven't been on this big stage in fights before, but I've been in sparring and I feel like I've always done well and I feel like I'm on this level and I'm ready to prove it. All right, we're looking forward to it Saturday night. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ben, how you doing? <laughs> Can I get a classic? Hello. There you go. Now we can start. Spooky night. He said this is a good hairstyle over here. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, Prince Charmer, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, what's the best thing, Ben, about working with Tyson Fury? Um, although everybody sees the showmanship and that, obviously it's all fun and games, but deep down he's a very good man and an a, a absolute gentleman, I'd say, that's, uh, with good morals and a good outlook on life. And I'd say that, you know, developed a, uh, although we've, we've got many different relationships in terms of training and fights, so, you know, I see him like a brother. And he works <laughs> pretty darn hard. Doesn't very, he? very, very hard, yeah. Oh. As the trainer, if you put the trainer hat on now, yeah. uh, what's the scouting report on the gentleman down there to our right, Otto Valley? Exactly what he said, you know, he's a, he's a very, very good boxer and obviously people, which I can understand, underestimate him and, and that, but, you know, it's very, very hard for me to get the fight, what he had, you know, his main test against Adrian Granite, you know, so a lot of the public haven't seen that, but if you watch that fight, you know, um, I think that's, that's the best that he's been so far. And uh, that's credit to, to Joey. And, you know, he's a very, very good boxer. He, done a, he, he put on a fantastic performance that night. And, uh, you know, I, I believe that he, is, he does belong at this level. But, uh, you know, he's world level, but Tyson's elite. I read a couple articles after the last fight. And although, obviously, Tyson was more than success, successful on that night, he didn't quite follow the game plan to a T. Doesn't mean it wasn't a good performance, right? But you said he didn't necessarily go out there and do what I told him to do. So how do you kind of get him to key in and focus I'm more on the corner in this fight? Sometimes Tyson's been at this level and he's, he's, he's uh, experienced. So sometimes I'll see something that he don't see, but you know, sometimes he'll see something I don't see. And obviously he got the job done and uh, you know, he made an adaption from round one into round two, which ended up finishing the fight successfully. And uh, you know, it was, uh, you can't fault that performance. Right, Tyson? I know that, that he wasn't too happy, but you had in your mind, you know what you wanted to do, and that was to make a statement in that fight, your first fight on U.S. soil, and you knew, even though he wanted you to box the first couple of rounds and, and move around, you were gonna go for the kill. How would you kind of sum up that first experience here in the U.S. and that fight against Schwartz? 
I thought it was a fantastic um, evening of entertainment yeah. from start to finish. Um, I was here in Las Vegas for the first time. I had to put on a show. And I'm sure it was. Sold out stadium. Um, the buzz of electricity in the arena on the night was amazing. The reception I got, the after party was amazing, the flight was amazing. I had a great experience here in Las Vegas. The press conferences were good. Everything was good. Bob, when was the last time you saw an entrance? Like something that like Tyson Fury did. Can you remember another time with the, the Apollo Creed and he had the dancers and the flaming? I mean, that was something very Apollo memorable. Apollo Creed was in, in a movie. Right. This was real life. No, I'm saying the, 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 what the, he the, did the was... The last, the last crazy <laughs> entrance that I, I saw was that uh, Frank, I think, might remember it, when Prince Ahmed came down from the city, right? Uh, and the Mexican thing, fighting the Mexican, the Mexican guys are throwing the beer. It was the same color. You don't know that. You don't know that for a fact. He did, because he tasted the beer, man. <laughs> Yeah, but not since Prince the scene, right? I know you have something special planned, but we won't let the cat out of the bag for this show. But look, uh, with the significance of this weekend, you've embraced the Mexican culture. Yesterday at the way, you had the, the Libra, Lucha Librador mask, and you had the flag and everything. So how have also the Mexican fans embraced you as well? It's been an amazing experience, you know. Um... I met quite a few Mexican people, a sense of being here, and I found every one of them um, loving and respectful and honourable. So I can only go on, on how I've been tracked by everybody, and it's been a fantastic experience. You know, Paul Hayes welcomed us, and he's been training with us on a daily basis for the last two camps. It's been an amazing uh, asset to the team. Big thank you, Paul Hayes. Shout out. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> Right. Mr. Trump, tear down that wall. We need more Mexicans in this country. <laughs> Hell yeah! You weren't there yesterday. What, what, what Bob said was after the fight, you're going to go down to, to the border and you'll help personally lift people up over the wall if they want to come into the United States. Stand on Bob as a snap. That's it. And reach over and grab them. Hands down. So, um, you know, it, this has to be, it seems like I've only, now this is only our second fight working together, but you seem to be the happiest and in the best physical and mental uh, shape uh, of your career. Would you agree with that assessment? Yeah. Um, I feel good. I feel fit. I've trained really hard. Um, I'm in great shape. Weight's perfect. I'm injury-free. Um, feeling sharp. I feel rejuvenated. I feel um, ready for a good fight, you know. I, I don't know much about Otto at all, to be fair, and that's you, sometimes a good thing. Because when you know everything about an opponent, it doesn't really turn me on a little bit more than it should do. But when the unknown, it's more exciting, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. You know, I don't know, I, I know he's good looking, blonde hair, blue eyes, just my type, I think. <laughs> and uh, tall, in shape. Okay. He's got a good, uh, good manager and um, a good trainer, you know. I have no joy going back when he used to train with Andy Lee, who's a cousin of mine. Um, and I know Dimitri from like 2010 at the Cronk team. So we all have a good little long relationship here. And these boys know how I train, and know how I fight. And Joey knows the family I come from, the fighting stock. Um, so, you know, no one's under any illusions. Like, uh, like Bob said, Ingemar Johansson came and knocked out Floyd Patterson. So, is Otto Wallen going to knock out um, El Rey Gitanos? Definitely not. Because the fact is, I don't underestimate anybody. I give everybody the ultimate respect. Even if I'm fighting a guy who's had 20 fights and lost 20, I will train for him like he's had 20 knockouts in a row. Because I never fail to prepare. I trained hard for this fight, as hard as I trained for Wilder, as hard as I trained for anybody. I've not overlooked him. I've been in America for five weeks training. I was in Spain for two weeks before that, and I was at home for two weeks before that. I'm as strong as I've ever been. I feel very, very fit and very, very accurate. We've been working on different things in the gym. <coughs> Obviously, the tallness and the southpaw, and he's a defensive fighter. That always is a challenge. But I've never met a challenge I couldn't defeat. I've never met a mountain I couldn't climb. I've never met a man I couldn't beat. So he's going to be no exception. And if, I, if all things go to plan, we're going to um, have a good fight, entertain the uh, Las Vegas fans, and uh, hopefully we'll go for a beer afterwards. Who knows? Bob, anything, any closing remarks you'd like to say? Yeah, I think what we're going to do, Christina, right, throw you a curveball. Before we have the fighters pose and they go to the television, 
why don't we take three questions from the audience, you pick them out, whoever raises their hand, let them ask three questions, anything you want, to either of the fighters, their camps, and so forth, and you're gonna get off the cuff answers, which is a lot better than when there's one-on-one -on -one interviews. All right. You heard the boss. Anybody have a question for anybody up here on the dais? Raise your hand. Don't be shy. Question. We got a microphone. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> What do you eat on fight day? Uh, is this for Tyson, Otto, or both? Who's it to? To me? I eat pig iron and steel every day. Yeah. Like John Wayne said in The Quiet Man. Anybody else? Oh, we have one over here. Mr. Aru, since Mr. Aru said that you are learning in Spanish, so I will ask you in Spanish. <laughs> ¿Cómo this, this man, this man is from Argentina. Argentina. No, Mexico. What? Oh. Mexico. <laughs> I thought you are from Argentina. <laughs> Mexico. Mexico. Okay. Oh, okay, good. Many years ago. Good. Okay. Uh, Many years ago, Argentina. <laughs> <laughs> Always from Mexico? Mexico City, Mexico City. Mexico. Are you sure? <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, Check his passport. Okay, that, that is a okay. Since Mr. Aaron says that you are learning Spanish, so my questions will be in Spanish, okay? Go for it. Okay. Uh, Señor Rey de los Gitanos. Yes. Uh, ¿Qué se siente? que el Día de la Independencia de México, lleno de mexicanos, que se presente un señor de Inglaterra y que encabece esa fiesta de los mexicanos. Yo lo vi ayer con su bandera de México, la música del de rey, con dinero o sin dinero, yo sang las güeyes. Ay, perdón, ya estoy hablando de Antonio. <risa> <risa> I, I was, was going to translate the first okay. half, but I don't have the rest. <laughs> okay, that's all. That's all. Well, yes, I am the Gypsy King, El Rey Gitanos, and it is a privilege to be boxing on Mexican Independence Weekend. I'm going to put on a, fast, a fantastic show, and yes, I do love uh, big cuddly toys and crayons. Thank you very much. <laughs> One more question. I don't know, maybe. And I do like being tickled, yes. Yeah. <laughs> you forgot, that was the last part. <laughs> Any, anybody else? Anybody? Yeah, right here, right here. <laughs> also from Mexico. If you win this uh, fight, uh, your fans, they're going to follow this particular day for also going to come with the independent, Mexican Independence Day and tell me about a little bit about it. Sure. Can you say that in Spanish? Because I only understand Spanish, please. Dinos un poquito de tu camisa, que está muy bonita. Y además, se va a celebrar, si ganas tú la pelea, también en tu país, la independencia. Perfect. Yes, sir. We're celebrating, we're going to celebrate on this day, it's a fantastic opportunity. You know, what people don't know is, I wasn't supposed to box on this weekend. I was supposed to box in New York, October, early October to mid-October. And when we heard that Canelo Alvarez wasn't going to be fighting on Mexican Independence Weekend, I thought, damn, what a shock, because, you know, this has been a special weekend for many, many, many events in Las Vegas every year for boxing. So I thought, the Mexican people are not going to have a main attraction, a main event. So I need to step in. So I brought my fight date forward, four weeks, four weeks closer to fight. Um, just so you could see, El Rey Thanos, and so that the Mexican people could have a main event, a massive superstar fighter boxing on this weekend. And so that's you very much. He's that's telling true. the truth. Really, he's supposed to fight on October 5. He calls up, he says, look, the date's open. I'm half Mexican. I want to fight on that day. That's the truth.
Yeah, yeah the shirt, fantastic shirt, isn't it? Big shout out, Claudio Lulu. Uh, did you ever see the movie Coco? Yeah. <laughs> yes, this is a fantastic shirt from that movie. Yeah. Lovely. Excellent. Very colourful. Brings out the colour of my eyes and uh, my complexion and my um, chiselled uh, cheekbones. Thank you for noticing. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I want to thank everybody for coming, right? And it's going to be a great event on Saturday. And don't forget tomorrow where we have uh, some of the best fighters around uh, who are going to be co the co-features on this card. Uh, you've got to be here. you got to meet Navarati, uh, Flash Lordy's grandson, uh, Quadras, a terrific, terrific fighter from Mexico, uh, Zapata, Pedraza, right? And we can remember, we'll have an interpreter here from Spanish to English, because this is Mexican Independence Week. I'll do that, John, if you want. Um, oh, good. Tyson Fury will be here Translator. to provide a great, great translation. Okay, we're going to pose the fighters? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, us. Christina. You've done a fantastic job. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate you getting us started here. Thank you, everybody, for joining us.